Hello and welcome to another Power Maths lesson. We're looking at capacity and volume today. Let's do a flashback forward to get warmed up and then we'll get started. Okay, here we go for our final flashback four of the week. So click pause here, have a go at these questions and click play when you want to go through your answers. Let's have a look at question one then. One banana weighs how many blocks? And the answer was two blocks. If you have a look at the balance, two bananas weighs four blocks. So if you split them in half, if you split the bananas in half, you would have just one. And if you split the blocks in half, you would have two. So one banana weighs two blocks. Question two, how many minutes are in quarter of an hour? The answer is 15. There are 30 minutes in half an hour and 60 minutes in a full hour. Question three, draw the arrow after a quarter turn anti-clockwise. So going in the opposite direction to hands on a clock. And the answer is your arrow would have looked like that. And finally, question four, calculate three quarters of 40. And the answer was 30. If you split 40 up into quarters, into four parts, you would have 10 in each part. And three of those parts give you 30. Okay, let's have a look at today's Power Maths lesson. So here's today's Discover. We've got Meg and Milo sat on their sofa with some drinks and some popcorn, looking like they're ready to watch a film on the TV. And question 1A says this, how can you find out which cone holds more popcorn? Now listen carefully to that question. It's asking you how you can find out. So you need to think of the ways that you can find out. We don't just need a this one or this one answer. We need to know how you're going to find out. And part B, how can you find out which glass has the larger capacity? So some things to consider before you get going. Is there more than one way that you could find out which cone holds more popcorn? And this word capacity means how much something can hold in it. So the thing with the largest capacity can hold the most drink. Okay, click pause here, have a go at the Discover and click play when you want to go through the Walt and Wilkes and share your answers. Let's have a think about today's Walt and Wilfs and think about these answers then. So our Walt today, to compare volume. And our Wilfs are to, oh, that should say to know what capacity and volume are. Then we've got to compare the capacity of different containers, so how much they can hold, and to compare different volumes, so different amounts of things. Okay, let's have a think about that first question then. It was how can we find out which cone holds the most popcorn. Now we've got a few different ways that we could have done this. So up here, this is our first way. So with one of the cones empty, we could have, say, poured the red cone into the blue cone. And if we'd done that, we would have seen that the red cone does not fill up the blue cone. Look, there it is. We've poured all that popcorn in and it's not quite filled up the blue cone. So we know that the red cone holds less than the blue cone. Or we could have done this the other way around. We could have taken all of the popcorn that was in the blue cone, tried to pour it into the red, and we would have seen, uh-oh, it overflowed. So there must be more in the blue cone than the red cone can hold. Now, the last way that we could do, and we've got Flo down here suggesting this way, she said, I will pour the popcorn from both cones into identical, which means exactly the same, containers. So here she goes, she's poured her red one into here and her blue one into here. And you can see that this container is only half full, whereas this container is three quarters full. So we found out the same thing, that the red cone has a smaller capacity, there's less in it than the blue cone. So the blue cone holds more popcorn. Let's have a think about part B then. You were asked, how can you find out which glass has the biggest capacity? Now that means which glass can hold the most. Now we've got Dexter here and he says, I'm going to use spoons of rice to measure the capacity. So you can see what he's done here is he's taken some rice, he's got the two empty glasses and he's spooned rice into the glasses. And the bigger glass is going to be able to hold more rice. So he's going to have to do more spoonfuls to fill it up. So the tall glass holds 10 spoonfuls. 
whereas the short glass holds five spoonfuls. So we know that the tall glass has the larger capacity. Now Sparks is saying something really important here because there's two words that we're going to be using today, volume and capacity. And they're very similar, but they mean slightly different things. Volume is the amount of space that something takes up. So it might be rice, it might be water, anything that you can pour, you can think about it having a volume. How much space does it take up? And capacity is when we're talking about things that hold things. So glasses or bowls or cones, anything that you can pour something into. Capacity, and you can remember this, capacity is all about containers. They both begin with k capacity containers. So a capacity is the maximum volume, the maximum amount that a container can hold. Okay, let's think together so that we can get some of these ideas really clear and have a practice. Let's have a look at question one then. Meg pours the tea from three teapots into identical jugs. So here's the teapots, A, B and C, and she's poured the tea into these jugs, and these jugs are all the same. And we're being asked, which teapot has the least tea in it? Which teapot has the most tea? And to finish the sentence, the jug for teapot C is how full? A quarter, half or three quarters? So here we're measuring the volume of the tea. We're measuring how much stuff, what amount of tea we've got in each teapot. So some things to consider. Why can't you compare the volume of the tea when it's inside the teapots? Why do we have to pour the tea into identical jugs? And we've just said we're measuring how much tea, so we're measuring the volume of tea. Okay, have a little go at this question, see if you can do part A, B, C, and then we'll talk about these answers. So click pause here and have a go. Right, let's talk about these answers then. So part A, we were asked which teapot has the least tea in it. And this is quite easy to see, isn't it? Because as soon as we pour them into these identical containers, we can see, there it is, teapot A has got the least. And which had the most? Well, again, it's easy to see, it was teapot B. And finish this off, the jug for teapot C is, let's have a look, it's halfway up, isn't it? So it's half. Right, let's have a go at another question. The capacity, so remember that's how much a container can hold, the capacity of one of these cups is 10 spoonfuls of rice. The cone can hold half as much as the cup and the bowl can hold five times as much as the cone. What is the capacity of each container in spoonfuls? So you've got a picture here, the cup can hold 10 spoonfuls, the cone can hold half as much, and the bowl can hold five times as much as the cone. And we've got to work out what the capacity of each container is in spoonfuls. How many spoonfuls can you fit in each container? So have a think. Could you draw something to help you? Or are there any calculations you could do to help you? Have a go at question two. Click pause here and click play when you want to talk about the answers. Right, let's go through this step by step then. So the first thing we've got to think about is the cone. And we're told that the cone holds half as much as the cup. So we know that the cup holds 10 spoonfuls. And if the cone holds half as much, then we need to know half of 10. And that's five. So the cone holds five spoonfuls. Brilliant, we've sorted that first part out, part A. The capacity of the cone is five spoonfuls. What about the bowl then? This can hold five times as much as the cone. So we've worked out that the cone can hold five spoonfuls. Now we need to times this by five to get the bowl. So the bowl is five spoonfuls times five, which equals 25 spoonfuls overall. So the capacity of the bowl is 25 spoonfuls. Okay, time for the challenge. 
Now, this is a bit of a tricky one today, but if you think about it carefully, it's not too bad. Part A says this. How many spoonfuls does the big cone hold? And part B says how many does the bucket hold? Now, you need to look really carefully at this diagram. And you might want to draw something out a bit like this to help you, or you can just use these pictures here. So we know from this middle one that the cone can hold five spoonfuls. And we worked that out last go. Now we've got a big cone, and that can hold the same amount as two little cones. And then we've got the bucket, which can hold the same amount as six little cones. Remember that each cone holds five spoonfuls. And you've got Ash down here giving you a bit of a clue. He's going to count in fives. So click pause here, see if you can work out how much does the big cone hold and how much does the bucket hold. Should we have a look then? So let's start off with the blue cone, the big cone. We know that it can hold the same amount as two little cones. And because we know that in each little cone we've got five spoonfuls, we can just count up in fives. Five spoonfuls for this cone, five spoonfuls for this cone can fit in this blue cone. So altogether the blue cone, the big cone, can hold five spoonfuls. What about the bucket then? This can hold the same amount as six of the small cones. Well, each of these small cones could fit five spoonfuls. So again, we can count up in fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So all together, the bucket can hold 30 spoonfuls. Well done for having a go at all of those questions. You've sat and listened really well. Let's have a go in your practice books now. So you're working on page 99 today. We're almost all the way to 100. Have a go at your practice book. Click pause and click play when you're ready for that extension question at the end. Well done on having a go in your practice book. Let's have a go at the extension question. So a nice straightforward one to finish today. True or false? Glass A has more juice than glass B, but less than glass C. Click pause and click play when you have your answer. Ready with your answer? It is true. Glass A has less juice than glass C, but it has more juice than glass B. As a little bonus question, have a look at these three glasses. What is the capacity of each of the glasses? Are they the same or are they different? They're the same, aren't they? Even though the volume of juice in each glass is different, so the amount of juice, the capacity, which is the maximum amount that each of the glasses can hold, is the same. Each glass could hold the same amount. OK, well done today. We'll finish things there. Well done on finishing another Power Math lesson. That's it from me for a little while. For the next few lessons, you've got the fantastic Miss Rachel. So enjoy the rest of this topic and I'll see you again soon.